God's predetermined purpose. No one can pull anything over the eyes of our Lord Jesus Christ and surprise him. His perfection has always been complete. Our primary text is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 13, even though I will give some other references as well. This portion of Scripture refers to the sowing of the good seed and the soil upon which that seed fell being a strong, decisive factor. Each seed, when it was laid upon that soil, whatever that soil was, produced or failed to produce a result. Failed to produce a good result. It produced a result in some cases, which really was exactly what God knew it was going to be in every case. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 gives reference to the message given in Genesis in Matthew 13, verses 1 through 13. 1 Corinthians 1. Chapter 2, verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, Amen. that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God gift is free. Again, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 and 7. Paul states, I have planted, Paul watered. I have planted, but Apollo watered. Apollo is a devout Judean Christian, Judean Christian from Alexandria. But God gave the increase. I planted, Paul watered, but if, they, if it stops there, nothing happens. Third step is God gave the increase. Amen. So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that giveth the increase. And God knows exactly what he's doing. Let us begin with Matthew 13, verses 1 through 3, as we continue with every verse up to verse 13. Matthew 13, verses 1 through 3. The same day when Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside, and great multitudes were gathered together unto him, so that he went into a ship, and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore, and he spake many things unto them in parables. Keep that in mind. Saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Parables, what are they? The meaning of which is intended only for his elect. It's like a secret military message given only for the, those to whom it's intended. In reference again to 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 and 7, which says that Paul planted, Apollo watered, but God gave the increase. We see here in the minds of those who understand and see what God is really attempting to say here. But for the, for the non-elect, they have no idea what you're talking about. The three essential functions being planting, watering, and the giving of God's increase is unfolded here in the text that we are to read. In speaking of stubborn rebellion against the word of God, we see here what verse 4 in Matthew chapter 13 has to say. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, 
and the fowls came and devoured them up. Do you picture the fellow here who never had any interest in spiritual things? And when he hears the word of God, his attitude is, that doesn't mean a thing to me. Falls by the wayside. In reference to the Judeans who utterly refused to serve the God of their fathers, it says also in Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 3, where it says, God's word declares, and I quote, and I'll appoint over them four kinds, saith the Lord, the sword to slay, and the dogs to tear, and the fowls of the heavens, and the beasts of the earth to devour and destroy. God doesn't mess around with these people when they choose without any second thought of denying him. He'll deny them. First, Second Corinthians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. It says, But if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. There is a sin, the Bible speaks of, of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. I can say something against my Lord Jesus out of ignorance. And God will forgive me if, I, if he knows I am to repent. But if I blaspheme the Holy Spirit, there's no hope. It says, in whom the, the God, small g, small God, g for God, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. If I am to stand before a pulpit and try to glorify myself at the expense of my Lord Jesus Christ, I am out of line. Woe is me. I come close, maybe, to blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Could be. Maybe not, but who knows? One's particular secular idea and or a dedication to a religious teaching alone does not necessarily make that notion or teaching true. The Bible is the determining factor in everything we teach. So getting back to verse 4, and when, and when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. And, of course, the fowls of the world system can present any kind of thought to us, anything that sounds good or otherwise. And we shouldn't fall for it. Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 5 through 7, speaks of those who have a form of religion without Jesus. Second Timothy chapter three verses five through seven, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. Yeah. The Holy yeah. Spirit will show you when you're hearing a false teacher, and you know it just doesn't quite come together. There's something wrong with it. You better walk away from it. Amen. Don't take it in. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts. You know, there are some godly women, precious godly ladies. But you know, I might be missing something here, but you know, I've never heard a woman preacher, now I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, who really amount to anything. I can name several of them. 
women preachers. At each wedding, everyone I've heard just didn't seem to have anything to offer. Correct me if I'm wrong. There may be some. But anyway, it says they're ever learning, always learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. In having a form of godliness, the dirty birds of apostate religion devour them. Matthew 13, verses 5 and 6. As we continue. This is the next step. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth. And forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. Matthew 15, verse 13 kind of really gives us something here that, was, that touches upon that. Matthew chapter 15, verse 13. But he, that is the Lord Jesus, answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted, which he hath not planted, shall be rooted up. So when you have a teaching that really sounds good, or maybe the, re the response to a good teaching being shallow in your response, there is a shallowness in the false teaching and also a shallowness in the person who does not really grasp a real teaching. It's a picture of the spir spiritual shallowness we witness in so many churches today. An emotionally based, feel good about yourself religion may seem to thrive for a while up until when challenges with the deepness of biblical truth and or difficult circumstances, then because of its shallow foundation, either in the teaching or in the way it was received, it is clearly, it is clearly unable and unprepared in standing up against challenges and trials. When you feel good about your religion and no one really challenges you, it seems like everything's going okay until there are problems. I faced it. Consider chapter Luke chapter 16, verse 13. You can't be doubly minded. You cannot try to compromise God's word and the world's system together and try to get them to mesh together and agree. What was the verse, brother, verse chapter 16? Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Of course, that teaching goes a long ways, a long ways. Because it'll seem like we are following both worlds in our thinking. But until we get deeper into God's word, his word will separate these two ideas from each other because they, because they mix like oil and water. <laughs> they don't mix, not at all. On to Matthew chapter 13, verse 7. Speaking of the next step, Matthew 13, 7, and some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. Very short verse, but certainly is right to the point. Thorns being the cares of this world being held above God's word. I'd rather have more concern, the person would say, when he's in this kind of a, of a mental situation. I'm more concerned about my own personal life and that which pleases me instead of God's word. So these thorns 
would cause you to not really care that much as you should, as much as you should about God's word. Romans 8, verse 6 says, For to be carnally minded is death. Romans chapter 8, verses 7 and 8. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. As it is with strangers, those outside of God's covenant, there are they who do not nor ever will have the capacity in their DNA to understand God's word. So you cannot walk in both worlds. Matthew 13, verse 8. Another instance where the seed is cast upon the soil. But others fell into good ground. Now here's where it gets good. Others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some in a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, some thirtyfold. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6, we read, In all thy ways acknowledge him, that is our Lord Jesus Christ, and he shall direct thy paths. I love the book of Joel. Chapter 2, verse 28 through 32. I believe this is the icing on the cake. Joel chapter 2, verses 28 through 32. Speaking of the seed that fell upon the good soil and the results that take place thereof. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall, pro shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions, and also upon thy servants, and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Amen. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Verse 32. Hear this. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, and in the, rem and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. Let me say that again. And in the remnant whom the Lord shall call. He calls us. He knows who his remnant are. There's a time in our lives when we don't know who the remnant is. But he shows us because he knows. And then he directs our path and brings to us the revelation of the fact we're chosen in him. Does that make us feel superior and proud? I'm better than you. No, it humbles you. It'll humble you. Amen. Because when you see what Jesus did for you on the cross, that you are the remnant chosen in him, and he shed his precious blood for you, that humbles you in a wonderful way. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 10, speaks of the same event, possibly, of could be what could very well be and will be someday the time of what's called the Great Tribulation. Three and a half years or seven years, theologians argue about that, but that's, that's not the point I'm making right now. But there's going to come a time when Jesus had told us that he'll come as a thief in the night. We cannot determine that time. Oh, many scholars have tried to 
to determine the day and the hour. And I know of one man who said 88 reasons why Jesus Christ is coming in 1988. Well, that simply, of course, is, didn't happen. <laughs> Second Peter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall burn with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Well, that sounds pretty, pretty serious. Is this speaking of the end time, the time of judgment that will come? I would love seeing the time when that spirit of hostility and that is now being directed to our Lord Jesus Christ will be put down and destroyed completely. Amen. And every single one who's a part of that will face God's final judgment. Amen. Unless they have repented. Yes. That's why we need to be faithful. Even though he's present, people will still turn away from him. Oh, yeah. That's the, amazing. Yeah, right. it says when, when he comes, they will hide, try to hide themselves in the caves of the rocks and will say, hide us from the wrath of God. But they're not going to be able to hide. <laughs> Matthew 13, verse 9. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Let's talk about spiritual discernment. A special gift of discernment is given to the elect in Christ. Others always flounder in a continual state of confusion and false teachings. For example, Isaiah chapter 30, verses 18 through 21, is a uh, it speaks of a special gift God gives to his elect. The spirit of being able to hear with their ears to see with their eyes and to understand. Understand the parables. Remember, the parables are a key. Isaiah 30, verses 18 through 21. And therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you. He'll wait and be gracious unto you. And therefore will he be exalted that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for him. If I stopped right there, that would, that would say it all. Verse 19. For the people shall dwell in Zion at Jerusalem. Thou shall weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee at the voice of thy cry. When we call out to him, he'll be gracious unto us because we have served him. We have trusted him, and we have acknowledged the fact that he is king of kings and lord of lords, and no one can excel above him. So, so he, will, he, he will hear us when we cry, and he will answer thee, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner any more. Talk about the true teachers of God's word. They won't be shut off somewhere where no one's going to hear them. Their, their voice is going to be heard everywhere. This liberal media, so-called, will no longer be in effect to shut, them up, to shut them up. The teachers shall not be removed into a corner anymore, but thine eyes shall see the teachers, to see thy teachers, and thine ears. You remember it says, who hath an ear to hear, let him hear. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee, saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. Matthew 13, verses 10 through 23, give special reference to the 
Yes. Parables. Okay. All right. All right. Amen. <laughs> and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, hath, to him shall be given. If you have that gift, he'll give you more. And he shall have more abundance. Amen. But whoso hath not, that is, the gift of God's special, special calling, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. They seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand, because they do not have the capacity to understand. God gave us spiritual discernment is the only key here. Matthew 13, 10 through 23 continues. We pick up at verse 14. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, of Isaiah, chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, which, which saith, By hearing ye shall not hear, and shall not understand. He's talking, speaking of and to those who will not in any way be moved. And seeing you shall not see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their eyes they have closed, lest any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I shall heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Speaking to his elect. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see these things which ye see, and have not seen them. And to hear these things which ye hear, and have not heard them. Having a spirit of religion, being religious, ever learning, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Studying philosophy and psychology, religion, but they get nowhere. We have a lot of that going on today. Verse 18, hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. Now he's summing it up. When anyone heareth the word, now remember I speak of the word. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh, then, then cometh the wicked one who is Satan, and catcheth the way that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. That was the first one. That he had no part in it at all. But he that received the seed in stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, Words mentioned again, and anon with joy received it, yet hath he not root in himself, but dureth for a while. He endure, endures for a while. For when tri tribulation and persecution ariseth because of the word, third time it's mentioned here, the word, by and by he is offended. How often have we seen that? Yeah. People come to church. And then they find an excuse to not come back anymore. Well, I didn't like what the, I didn't like the way that preacher combed his hair. I didn't like the way his 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 wife. I don't like the way his. I don't didn't like the dress his wife wore. Some silly excuse, and they're offended. <laughs> yeah, some stupid reasons. <laughs> Verse twenty-two: He also that receives seed among the thorns is the is he that heareth the word. And the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful. 
tears the world. Verse 23, but he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. The word. Hold, hold your thought, brother. Hold your thought. The word, being frequently mentioned here, is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the word. First John 5, 7. First John chapter 5, verse 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and they are one. That's the word we're talking about here. Nothing with God ever happens by accident. Not one seed is cast carelessly or at random chance. There is a predetermined purpose in the perfect mind of God for the placing of each seed God certainly does have a chosen people and purpose for them. I'll close with this one verse. Isaiah 44, verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 44, 1 and 2 speaks of the chosen. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen, that saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou, Jeshurun, which means Israel, to be blessed and supremely happy, whom I have chosen. God bless. spirit, which really leads them off the, on the wrong path, and they think they're doing the right thing. Yeah, it happens a lot. <laughs> I was one of them.